job. That's what the Royal Engineers diving team do at their Southampton training headquarters. This water-based unit of the army has an important role to play in river reconnaissance and underwater demolition, and it learns to use its cutting equipment in the training tank. And of all people, it's Captain David Jones who keeps an expert eye on the instruction. Diving fashions don't change much, although the rubber suit and strapped-on air bottles are an improvement on the old heavy helmet and weighted boots. It also allows more freedom of movement underwater and can be released easily in an emergency. The portholes are excellent observation points. They also provide a way of chalking up the next instructions, if you're not too backward at writing back to front. It also has an experimental purpose, this diving instruction, and living underwater in a perspex house is something which excites the scientists. This bell-shaped bubble was built to demonstrate such possibilities to the visitors at the London Boat Show. Sinking it was only one of the problems to overcome. Recent experiments in underwater living included Frenchman Jacques Cousteau's month-long stay in a five-roomed house 50 feet under the Red Sea. Pictorial cameraman Stan Guzzi appreciates this strange sensation because he dived into the Perspex Dome to complete this story. And here it is, a weird, watertight world, scanned by a nearby closed-circuit TV camera. Extra air can be obtained by contact with the surface controllers. Living in this kind of atmosphere doesn't harm a man's appetite, and that's something which can't be controlled by a flick of a switch. That's when divers become underwater waiters and have to make a special lunchtime trip down to the dome. There's no complicated procedure for getting in and out of the dome. It's simply a matter of swimming underneath and coming up into the airlock. That's the view you get from dry land of a diver taking an underwater lunch break. To get a closer look, it means taking a scooter ride, although this bomb-shaped transport hardly fits the description. To be able to live, eat and sleep in such circumstances is a 